According to Reuters, the COP28 presidency released on Wednesday a proposed text for a final climate deal that would for the first time push nations to transition away from fossil fuels to avert the worst impacts of climate change. Here is some reaction to the proposal. According to Bloomberg, oil steadied in Asia after tumbling almost 4% on Tuesday as rising production from Russia and the U.S. added to concerns the market is becoming oversupplied. West Texas Intermediate traded below $69 a barrel, while global benchmark Brent was near $73. The weekly average of Russia's seaborne crude exports jumped to the highest level since early July, while the U.S. raised its estimate for output this year. According to Bloomberg, China's top leaders including President Xi Jinping vowed to make industrial policy their top economic priority next year, a message likely to disappoint investors seeking big stimulus to boost growth. The ruling Communist Party's annual economic work conference stressed the use of technological innovation to lead the construction of a modern industrial system, according to a readout published by state media. It also called for steps to, vigorously, develop the digital economy and artificial intelligence technologies. According to Reuters, with Zara owner Inditex and HM set to disclose their most recent sales results, investors will be focused on one major question. How are the two fast fashion pioneers responding to the current market leader, Shine? Shine has a huge valuation and is primed for an IPO. With sales almost entirely online, the retailer generated about $23 billion in global revenue in 2022, according to research firm Corsight. According to Reuters, China should set its 2024 fiscal deficit and special local government bonds at appropriate levels and optimize the structure of fiscal spending, a senior Communist Party official said on Wednesday, according to state media CCTV. The comments came after an agenda-setting meeting which concluded on Tuesday, where top leaders pledged to step up policy adjustments to support an economic recovery in 2024. According to Reuters, Golfers playing for the PGA Tour have demanded more information about the potential impact of capital tie-ups being discussed, saying they had been kept entirely in the dark about the organization's future. The PGA has announced plans to merge with Saudi-backed rival Live Golf but has also recently said it would advance discussions with US-based strategic sports group which could come in as a co-investor. According to Bloomberg, Mast Key, a 23-story tower block overlooking the River Thames, stands as a warning to rogue builders trying to evade London's planning system. The £36 million apartment complex situated in London's historic military town of Woolwich was ordered to be demolished in September after dozens of planning deviations were exposed. Amongst other failings, the developers didn't provide a roof garden, commercial floor space or disabled access, all promised in the planning agreement. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve will likely hold interest rates steady for a third straight meeting, while pushing back against market expectations of rate cuts as soon as March. The Federal Open Market Committee is poised to keep rates in a range of 5.25% to 5.5% at its two-day policy meeting ending Wednesday, a 22-year high first reached in July. The rate decision and an accompanying statement will be released at 2 p.m. in Washington. Chair Jerome Powell will hold a press conference 30 minutes later. According to Bloomberg, stocks in Asia dropped ahead of the last Federal Reserve decision this year, led by selling in China after a top leadership meeting disappointed investors with a lack of strong economic support measures. Shares fell across the board in both Hong Kong and mainland China, with property developers among the biggest losers. The declines came after China's annual economic work conference this week prioritized industrial policy and indicated little desire for large-scale stimulus. According to Reuters, Indonesia will grant automakers that plan to build electric vehicle plants tax incentives on their imports of completely built-up EVs until 2025, a new presidential regulation showed as Jakarta seeks to attract more investment. Under the new regulation signed on December 8 and released this week, companies that have invested in EV plants, are planning to increase their EV investments, or planning to invest would be eligible for the incentives. According to Reuters, the leaders of China and Vietnam hailed as strategic on Wednesday their decision to strengthen ties and be part of a community with a shared future, as a visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping entered its second and final day. During the trip, Xi's first this year to an Asian nation, 
The communist ruled neighbors, close in economic areas but at odds over the South China Sea, signed dozens of cooperation pacts, following months of talks on how best to describe ties. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury market participants hope the securities regulator will heed pleas for a careful phase in of a rule it is due to finalize on Wednesday that would force more central clearing of transactions in a seismic overhaul of the $26 trillion market. The top five securities and exchange commission officials are scheduled to vote at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on the rule. It was proposed over a year ago in a broad effort to boost treasury market resilience during liquidity crunches, when buyers and sellers find it hard to complete transactions. According to Bloomberg, Taiwan's financial system undergirds a $760 billion high-tech economy, but its vulnerability to advanced hacks has raised fears of a worst-case scenario, a full-blown cyberattack from China that sends its currency and markets into a tailspin. To bolster its online defenses, government officials and financial institutions in Taipei are consulting security experts from the U.S. Treasury Department and working with American cybersecurity company Sim Space Corp. to run simulated cyberattacks cramming a hypothetical three weeks of digital assaults into an eight-hour drill. According to Reuters, a $275 billion market for high-risk bank debt has bounced back from a shock bondholder wipeout during the Credit Suisse rescue this year, but a bigger-than-expected slowdown in some major economies could test the market's revival. Additional Tier 1 bonds, AT1s, were thrown into chaos in March after $17 billion of Credit Suisse AT1s were wiped out as part of a forced merger with UBS. That raised questions about the future of the bonds which were introduced after the 2008 financial crisis to act as a shock absorber for banks, converting into equity if capital levels fall too low. According to Reuters, a winding down of the post-pandemic spending frenzy is hitting European luxury companies from LVMH to Caring but none more than Farfetch, an e-commerce pioneer. Founded in 2007, Farfetch is one of the few global online retailers of high-end merchandise from a range of labels, such as a $5,690 Saint Laurent wool coat and a $5,900 white gold De Beers diamond necklace. According to Reuters, electric vehicle charging companies in Europe and the US have started fighting over the best spots for fast public chargers, and industry watchers predict fresh rounds of consolidation as more big investors enter the fray. Many current EV charger companies are backed by long-term investors, and more are expected to launch. Looming bans in various countries on cars powered by fossil fuels have made the sector more attractive to infrastructure investors like MG's Infracapital and Sweden's EQT. According to Bloomberg, the bond market's bold bet on U.S. interest rate cuts is set for its biggest test yet. After loading up on wagers that the Federal Reserve will lower rates by more than 100 basis points in 2024, investors are waiting on tenterhooks to hear Chair Jerome Powell speak Wednesday and see central bank officials' so-called dot plot outlining the path of U.S. monetary policy. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields fell for the third straight day on Wednesday tracking their U.S. peers down ahead of an auction for 20-year JGBs. The 10-year JGB yield was last down 5 basis points at a session low of 0.685%, slipping further from a near one-month high of 0.800% hit on Friday. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average rose for a third straight session on Wednesday, as Advantist and other chip-related stocks tracked overnight Wall Street gains. The Nikkei rose 0.25% to close at 32,926.35, while the broader Topix inched up 0.07% at 2,354.92. According to Bloomberg, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is struggling to reign in the widest financial scandal to hit his long-ruling Liberal Democratic Party in more than three decades, as it upends the balance of power among the rival factions that vie to set its policy and pick leaders. The premier is set to give a news conference at 6.15 p.m. Tokyo time Wednesday, at which he is expected to announce he's firing four of his cabinet ministers, who are among those accused of concealing income from fundraising events. Prosecutors may start questioning lawmakers as soon as the evening, after the parliamentary session ends, the Yomiuri newspaper said. According to Reuters, the COP28 presidency released a proposed text of a final climate deal on Wednesday that would, for the first time, 
push nations to transition away from fossil fuels to avert the worst effects of climate change. The draft is meant to reflect the consensus view of nearly 200 countries gathered at the conference in Dubai, where scores of governments have insisted on strong language to signal an eventual end to the fossil fuel era, over protests from members of the oil producer group OPEC and its allies. According to Reuters, Alphabet's Google, Meta Platforms, Qualcomm and seven other tech companies on Wednesday teamed up to push for open digital ecosystems in response to new EU tech rules in a move that may also take the edge of possible future legislation. Calling itself the Coalition for Open Digital Ecosystems, the group said it wants to promote more open platforms and systems to boost growth and innovation in Europe. According to Reuters, Zara owner Inditex said on Wednesday its net profit jumped 32.5% jump in February to October, but the fast fashion giant's sales growth in the nine-month period slowed down from a year ago amid tougher times for consumers. The world's biggest fashion retailer said its net profit rose to 4.1 billion euros in line with analysts, most of whom are still betting on the company's ability to sell fashion faster and drawing more aspirational shoppers. According to Reuters, China said it found foreign geographic information software could be compromising confidential and sensitive data in key sectors including its military, and warned security departments to conduct in-depth checks to stem any further breaches. The Ministry of State Security said an extensive investigation found overseas geographic information system software was being used to collect data, some involving state secrets, posing a serious threat to China's national security. According to Reuters, the pound fell on Wednesday, after data showed the UK economy shrank in October, which could strengthen the case for the Bank of England to signal at its meeting this week that it may cut interest rates sooner than many currently believe. The Office for National Statistics said UK gross domestic product contracted by 0.3% in October, against forecasts for a no change. According to Reuters, the German economy will contract by 0.5% in 2024 due to the uncertainty caused by a budget crisis, the German Economic Institute IW said on Wednesday. The government is struggling to strike a budget deal for 2024 after a court ruling last month upset its financing plans. According to Reuters, Britain's economy shrank in October. Official data showed on Wednesday a day before the Bank of England is expected to keep interest rates at a 15-year high to curb still high inflation despite the toll they are taking on growth. Gross domestic product fell by 0.3% from September, the Office for National Statistics said. According to Bloomberg, Germany's ruling coalition sealed an agreement on a revised 2024 finance plan after a latest round of talks that stretched through the night into Wednesday, according to government officials. Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Economy Minister Robert Habeck and Finance Minister Christian Lindner will brief reporters on the details of the deal at 12 p.m. in Berlin, said the officials, who asked not to be identified in line with briefing rules. According to Bloomberg, Egypt is counting votes for an election in which President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi is poised to win a third term, despite the backdrop of the country's worst economic crisis in decades. Three days of polling concluded around 9 p.m. local time Tuesday with electoral authorities due to announce an initial vote tally today. The final results are scheduled for December 18. According to Reuters, Blackstone-owned Australian casino operator Crown Resorts on Wednesday confirmed it had started an internal probe into CEO Kieran Carruthers, who allegedly overruled the casino's security officers over banning intoxicated customers. The Australian Financial Review on Tuesday reported that the casino operator was inquiring into the actions of its chief as he had allegedly intervened to allow patrons back into the casinos after security removed them. According to Reuters, the COP28 climate summit went into overtime Wednesday morning, with negotiators trying to reach a deal for this year's UN meeting. Reuters reporters were on the ground delivering the latest updates, scenes and insights during the hoped for final hours all times local. According to Reuters, a South Korean academic group said on Wednesday that claims by some researchers in the country that a practical superconductor had been discovered were baseless, citing the group's inability to replicate the results. Superconductors are materials that allow electrical current to flow with no resistance, a property that would revolutionize power grids as well as advance fields such as computing chips, where electrical resistance acts as a speed limit. 
According to Reuters, the capital loss resulting from Renault's disposal of a first chunk of its stake in Nissan will amount to around 1 billion euros after the transaction was executed via share buyback, the French company said on Wednesday. The figure is significantly lower than the up to 1.5 billion euro estimate given on Tuesday. Renault said the lower impact was due to Nissan cancelling all the acquired shares. According to Bloomberg, the UK economy shrank more than expected in October as elevated borrowing costs took their toll, setting the stage for another quarter of stagnation that is widely forecast to persist through 2024. Gross domestic product fell 0.3%, the first drop since July and following a gain of 0.2% in September, the Office for National Statistics said Wednesday. Economists had forecast a fall of 0.1%. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble steadied near a more than one-week high on Wednesday, with the market looking ahead to an expected interest rate hike later this week as the supply of foreign currency from exporters showed signs of rising after an early December dip. Most analysts polled by Reuters expect Russia to raise interest rates by 100 basis points to 16% on December 15. Inflation pressure exacerbated by labor shortages and lending growth is expected to force the central bank to extend its monetary tightening cycle to one last hike. According to Reuters, Tesla's Model 3 rear-wheel drive and long-range vehicles will lose an up to $7,500 federal tax credit from December 31 based on new guidance under the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act, a message on the U.S. automaker's website showed late Tuesday. The U.S. Treasury issued guidelines earlier this month detailing new battery sourcing restrictions that take effect January 1 aimed at weaning the U.S. electric vehicle supply chain away from China. According to Reuters, Britain's payments regulator on Wednesday provisionally proposed a cap on cross-border interchange fees charged by MasterCard and Visa on transactions made between the UK and European single market. The payment systems regulator said a cap would protect businesses from overpaying after it published interim findings of a market review on interchange fees charged since Brexit, when the bloc's payments rules ceased to apply in Britain. According to Reuters, the Swiss economy will grow well below average in 2024, the government said on Wednesday, citing potential economic risks such as a slowdown in Germany and China and higher interest rates dampening demand for Swiss products. The wealthy country's economy will expand by 1.1% next year. The State Secretariat for Economic Affairs said, a reduction from its September forecast for growth at 1.2%. According to Reuters, Fitch Ratings said on Wednesday that its outlook for China in 2024 was neutral, but the country would continue to see headwinds from subdued external demand, property sector challenges and local government debt. Fitch forecast mainland China's gross domestic product growth would moderate to 4.6% from just over 5% in 2023 adding it, forecast growth to be broadly stable and generally at levels above those of rating peers. According to Reuters, South Korea's defense minister threatened on Wednesday to unleash a hell of destruction on neighboring North Korea in retaliation for any reckless actions. The heightened rhetoric comes after North Korea said last month it would no longer abide by a military pact between the neighbors in 2018 that aimed to reduce tension. According to Reuters, ISI said on Wednesday its Alzheimer's drug Lakembi will launch in Japan on December 20 following its inclusion on the National Health Insurance price list. Intravenous treatment of the drug, co-developed with U.S. partner Biogen, will cost about 2.98 million yen per patient per year, based on a Japanese health ministry panel ruling the same day. According to Bloomberg, Bain Capital has agreed to acquire a controlling stake in Aleda, a Swedish infrastructure projects and services firm, from the private equity firm Alter. The transaction values Aleda at about 1.5 billion euros including debt, people familiar with the matter said, asking not to be identified discussing confidential information. According to Reuters, European Union lawmakers provisionally agreed on Wednesday on a bill aimed at giving workers at online companies such as Uber and Deliveroo employee benefits, which if adopted would be a global first. The new rules will prevent workers from being wrongfully classified as self-employed, and therefore not eligible for benefits, by introducing presumption of employment. According to Reuters, Indian automaker Mahindra and Mahindra said on Wednesday that the company, along with external investors, will spend 8.75 billion rupees in its two-wheeler unit, 
classic legends, over the next two to three years. The Scorpio car manufacturer will invest $5.25 billion and the remaining will come from existing shareholders and new investors, Mahindra said in an exchange filing. According to Reuters, Eurozone bond yields ticked lower on Wednesday as investors waited for the Federal Reserve's latest interest rate decision, where the focus will be on officials' views about the path of borrowing costs next year. Germany's 10-year yield, the benchmark for the bloc, was last down three basis points at 2.199%, not far off a seven-month low of 2.166% touched last week. Yields move inversely to prices. According to Reuters, Argentine peso, non-deliverable, FX forwards moved sharply on Wednesday after the country's new government said it would devalue currency by over 50% to 800 per dollar. While large moves were to be expected in the wake of the widely flagged plan, traders were betting the peso's value would continue to dive, with six-month forwards pricing a level of 1,022 per dollar and one-year forwards a level of 1,687. According to Reuters, New bank lending in China jumped less than expected in November from the previous month, even as the central bank keeps policy accommodative to support a feeble recovery in the world's second-largest economy. Chinese banks extended 1.09 trillion yuan in new yuan loans in November, up from October's 738.4 billion yuan but missing analysts' expectations, according to data released by the People's Bank of China on Wednesday. According to Reuters, the deal struck at the COP28 UN climate summit is agreeable because it provides a menu for every country to follow its own pathway to the energy transition, a source familiar with Saudi Arabia's thinking told Reuters on Wednesday. Representatives from nearly 200 countries agreed at the summit to begin reducing global consumption of fossil fuels to combat climate change, signaling the end of the oil era. According to Bloomberg, Europe's biggest money manager is counting on Donald Trump's return and Javier Miley's shock therapy to pay off big for bond investors in Ukraine and Argentina, in a bet that right-wing populism will determine the most compelling stories in emerging markets next year. After elections in countries from Turkey to Argentina marked turning points for traders in 2023, Paris-based Amundi Sa is parsing the implications of political watersheds for the year to come. Argentinian and Ukrainian dollar securities are already among top performers in the emerging world this year, against the backdrop of a dovish shift by major central banks that's propelled a rally in the world's riskiest bonds. According to Bloomberg, Alibaba Group Holding Limited's cloud unit has lost another senior executive, as the struggling division contemplates its future after canning a spin-off and IPO. Chief Commercial Officer Kai Yingue has left the company, people familiar with the matter said. It wasn't clear why he departed but the exit coincided with an internal reshuffle, the people said, asking not to be identified discussing a private move. An Alibaba spokesperson didn't have immediate comment when asked about Kai's departure, which was first reported by local outlet 36KR. According to Reuters, Eurozone industrial production declined by more than expected in October, with the sharpest drop for capital goods such as machinery, reinforcing survey indications that the single currency area is in a recession. The European Union's statistics office Eurostat said on Wednesday that industrial production in the 20 countries sharing the euro fell by 0.7% month-on-month in October for a 6.6% year-on-year drop. According to Bloomberg, a top-performing Japanese fund is shifting its attention to railway operators from automakers on expectations companies that rely on domestic revenue will fare better should the yen rebound. Carmakers, which have been among the Topix's best sectors this year, may start to face headwinds if a stronger currency reduces the value of their overseas revenue, according to the Horizon Fund Sustainable Japan Equity Fund, which is outperforming 94% of its peers so far this year. At the same time, gains in the yen would lower energy costs for railway operators, the fund said. According to Reuters, Argentina will weaken its peso by more than 50% to 800 per dollar cut energy subsidies and cancel public works tenders as part of an economic shock therapy aimed at fixing the South American country's worst crisis in decades. Below are reactions from some analysts and international agencies to Tuesday's announcement. According to Reuters, oil tanker Cororo is taking the long way from Houston to Chile, sailing the length of South America's Atlantic coast, across the Strait of Magellan and heading up the Pacific coast before discharging. 
The voyage could take 32 days and travel more than 10,000 nautical miles before it ends next week, compared with about 23 days and less than 5,000 miles for a typical route through the Panama Canal. According to Bloomberg, Nasdaq Inc. is planning to use the technology it developed for a curtailed foray into cryptocurrency to expand in other nascent markets. The stock exchange operator, which in July aborted its launch of a custodian business for digital assets in the U.S., is hoping the technology will entice more clients to new assets such as carbon. According to Reuters, new bank lending in China jumped less than expected in November, even as the central bank keeps policy accommodative to support a feeble recovery in the world's second-largest economy. The People's Bank of China is expected to deliver more modest policy easing in the coming weeks, following a pledge this week by top leaders to step up policy adjustments to support the economic recovery in 2024, analysts said. According to Reuters, the Indian rupee fell to its record closing low on Wednesday as an uptick in the dollar index pressured the local unit ahead of the U.S. Federal Reserve's monetary policy decision later in the day. The rupee ended at 83.40 against the dollar, compared with its close of 83.3875 in the previous session. According to Reuters, Cuban gasoline, already one of the world's best bargains, is getting cheaper by the day for those with access to dollars, as the local peso currency continues its freefall against the greenback. Special gasoline sells on the Caribbean island nation for 30 pesos, or 11 cents per liter at the current black market exchange rate, among the world's cheapest fuel, according to online database GlobalPetrolPrices.com. According to Reuters, for a Federal Reserve that is actively weighing an end to aggressive rate hikes aimed at lowering inflation, easing financial conditions over recent weeks, on the face of it, appear more a foe than friend of monetary policy. According to Reuters, a quest for lower costs and efficiently moving goods and groups of people is pushing demand for driverless technology in trucks and shuttles, even as robotaxis battle renewed doubts after an October accident involving a General Motors cruise car. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania-based Aurora and California startup Gaddock are among companies developing self-driving technology for vehicles that operate on set routes and have largely managed to avoid the public eye or robotaxis have faced on busy city streets. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures edged higher on Wednesday, with the spotlight squarely on the year's final monetary policy meeting where the Federal Reserve is expected to leave interest rates unchanged. The recent slew of reports, including the Consumer Price Index data on Tuesday, have cemented expectations that interest rates have peaked, with traders also estimating potential rate cuts next year. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in U.S. and global markets from Mike Dolan. As Wall Street waited optimistically for the Federal Reserve's latest nods and winks on future policy, Argentina took a hatchet to its peso while China's stocks resumed sliding after another underwhelming government economic plan. According to Reuters, the Federal Reserve is widely expected on Wednesday to leave interest rates unchanged for a third straight time, but also signal that a pivot to monetary policy easing will neither come soon nor be sharp, given inflation's bumpy progress downward. In quarterly economic projections due to be released at the end of a two-day meeting, U.S. central bankers are still likely to pencil in at least a couple of rate cuts by the end of next year, as they seek to strike the right balance between policy that's restrictive enough to slow spending and hiring but not so tight that it sends them into a tailspin. According to Bloomberg, Germany's ruling coalition agreed not to suspend restrictions on new borrowing again next year as part of an accord struck overnight on a revised 2024 budget, according to people familiar with the deal. As part of the agreement, Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Economy Minister Robert Habeck and Finance Minister Christian Lindner will assess whether enough funds are available to support Ukraine's defense against Russia's invasion and make a decision on potentially lifting the so-called debt break in 2024 if needed, said the people, who asked not to be identified discussing confidential information. According to Reuters, a Chinese chip designer, part owned by the country's top sanctioned chipmaker, is purchasing U.S. software and has American financial backing, relationships that underscore the difficulty Washington faces applying new rules meant to block American support for Beijing's semiconductor industry. The company, Bright Semiconductor, offers chip design services to at least six Chinese military suppliers, a Reuters examination of company statements, regulatory filings, 
tenders and academic articles by People's Liberation Army researchers and institutions found. According to Reuters, Germany's coalition government has agreed to plug a 17 billion euro hole in its budget for 2024 by cutting climate damaging subsidies, spending in some ministries and federal grants, Chancellor Olaf Scholz said on Wednesday. The deal, reached after a weeks of crisis talks, will enable Germany to stick to its self-imposed debt restrictions, Scholz said in a press statement, flanked by economy minister Robert Habeck and finance minister Christian Lindner. According to Reuters, the European Union executive said on Wednesday it was waiting for a final step from Hungary to unlock Budapest's access to billions of euros hitherto frozen over concerns Prime Minister Viktor Orban had damaged democratic checks and balances. The European Commission said Hungary's latest judicial reforms must first be published in the country's official journal to be fully enacted, which would then allow the Brussels-based executive to unfreeze up to 10 billion euros in development aid for Budapest from the bloc's shared budget. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. Federal Reserve will probably want to see inflation come down further before easing policy and any expectations of interest rate cuts by March are overly optimistic, India's former central bank governor Raghuram Rajan said. While inflation in the U.S. is slowing, it's not easing at a fast enough pace that would give the Fed comfort to shift policy, Rajan, who is now a professor of finance at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business told Manaka Doshi at a Bloomberg India edition newsletter event in Mumbai. According to Reuters, the auditor hired by Volkswagen to audit its jointly owned site in Xinjiang posted a statement on LinkedIn flagging that just two employees supervised the project, in a sign of the reputational challenges posed by undertaking such work in the region. Volkswagen commissioned Loening GmbH to audit its jointly owned site in Xinjiang a region of China where rights groups have documented abuses including mass forced labor in detention camps. Beijing denies any such abuses. According to Bloomberg, economy chief Luis Caputo spent the better part of his first televised address explaining how Argentina got into such a dire economic situation, an addiction, to debt, for which the only medicine is a shock treatment. There is no more money, Caputo said repeatedly in the recorded video published Tuesday night, echoing President Javier Milei's words during his inaugural speech on Sunday. According to Reuters, Ukraine's biggest mobile network operator Kyivstar aims to restore some of its services later on Wednesday after an unprecedented cyber attack, the company's CEO Alexander Komarov said. Tuesday's attack on Kyivstar, which has 24.3 million mobile subscribers and more than 1.1 million home internet subscribers, knocked out services, damaged IT infrastructure and air raid alert systems in some of the regions. It appeared to be the largest attack since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. According to Reuters, embattled Chinese developer Country Garden Holdings has remitted more than 800 million yuan to repay onshore bondholders, a company filing to the Shenzhen Stock Exchange late on Tuesday showed. Bondholders of a total of 8 million notes, each with a principal of 100 yuan chose to exercise the put option by November 28, while Country Garden has wired funds that fully repaid the principal and interest, the filing showed. According to Reuters, far from being the theater of dreams, Old Trafford provided a horribly bleak dose of reality for Manchester United fans as they went out of Europe with a whimper on Tuesday. A season in which United have already lost half of their 24 matches in all competitions plumbed new depths as they slumped to a 1-0 loss at home to a Bayern Munich side in third gear. According to Bloomberg, Country Garden Holdings Co.'s onshore unit said it repaid in full an 800 million yuan bond with a put option due Wednesday. Country Garden Real Estate Group added in a filing to Shenzhen Stock Exchange Wednesday night that the debt would be delisted Thursday. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures edged higher on Wednesday, as the Federal Reserve was widely expected to leave interest rates unchanged at its final monetary policy meeting of the year. According to Bloomberg, for most of the summer, the chatter in the bond market about swelling U.S. deficits, and the depressing effect it was having on the price of treasuries, was incessant. Few, if any, were more vocal on the topic than Ed Yardini, the godfather of the bond vigilantes. Investors, Yardini said back in August, are quite concerned. The price action seemed to underscore the angst. By October, 
The yield on the benchmark 10-year bond had soared above 5% for the first time in 16 years. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures ticked higher on Wednesday, eyeing a bid for fresh 2023 highs, as investors braced for the Federal Reserve's last interest rate decision of the year. Futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the SP500 rose roughly 0.1%, while those on the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 were up about 0.2%. The indexes ended Tuesday at their highest since early 2022, with the Dow notching its third highest close ever. According to Reuters, nations struck a historic deal on Wednesday at the COP28 climate summit in Dubai to transition the global economy away from fossil fuels, following two weeks of hard-fought debate. Here are some takeaways from the pact. According to Bloomberg, Tesla Inc. filed a recall covering more than 2 million vehicles after the top U.S. auto safety regulator determined its driver assistance system Autopilot doesn't do enough to prevent misuse. The move is the result of a years-long defect investigation by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that will remain open as the agency monitors the efficacy of Tesla's fixes. A NHTSA spokesperson said the probe found that Tesla's means for keeping drivers engaged were inadequate. According to Reuters, Sweden's Transport Workers Union said on Wednesday it will stop collecting waste at Tesla's workshops in Sweden as of Sunday, December 24, in a sympathy action with other workers on strike. This type of sympathy action is very rare. We are using it now to protect the Swedish collective agreements and the safety of the Swedish labor market model, president of the Swedish Transport Workers Union, Tommy Reith, said in a statement. According to Reuters, German exports to countries bordering Russia grew by almost a third from January to October, while exports to Russia declined by around 40 percent, the Federal Statistical Office said on Wednesday. Excluding Russia, German exports to Commonwealth of Independent States, made up of former Soviet republics, rose 30% to 7.3 billion euros, the data showed. According to Reuters, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz said there needed to be more decision-taking by qualified majority in the European Union, in particular with respect to the enlargement process. Most of the bloc's 27 members want to open talks on Ukraine's accession at a summit this week and agree tens of billions of euros in further support for the country in its war against Russia's invasion, but both moves are being blocked by Hungary, Russia's closest ally in the EU. According to Reuters, Japan's industry and land ministries on Wednesday picked three consortia, including one featuring Germany's RWE and its partners, to operate offshore wind farms in the second round of a public auction. They said they would award a fourth wind farm that was part of the tender at a later date. According to Reuters, Eurozone bond yields fell on Wednesday as investors waited for the Federal Reserve's latest interest rate decision, with weak economic data from Britain and the Eurozone bolstering bets that central banks will soon cut borrowing costs. Germany's 10-year yield, the benchmark for the bloc, was last down five basis points at 2.181%, not far off a seven-month low of 2.166% touched last week. Yields move inversely to prices. According to Reuters, credit investment firm Bayview Asset Management told Reuters it has put its insurance arm Oceanview Holdings up for sale, in what could be the latest chapter of dealmaking in North America's life insurance and annuities sector. The sale process comes amid strong appetite from private equity firms and other asset managers for the fee revenue that comes from managing life insurance assets. There are now fewer opportunities to snap up such assets because high interest rates make it easier for insurers to generate enough returns without divesting them. According to Reuters, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak won a vote in Parliament on Tuesday over a bill which he hopes will allow Britain to send asylum seekers who arrive illegally in Britain to Rwanda. Last month the British Supreme Court declared the policy unlawful and Sunak hopes the new legislation, when passed, will fulfill his pledge to stop people arriving across the channel in small boats. According to Reuters, U.S. climate envoy John Kerry told other countries on Wednesday the first thing they could do to meet the targets on transitioning away from fossil fuel use in the COP28 deal was to stop building new unabated coal. The first and easiest thing that countries need to do to make this commitment real is to stop building new unabated coal, and we will continue to fight for that, he told a news conference. According to Reuters, markets welcomed, with caution, 
the first details of President Javier Miley's plans to shock Argentina's beleaguered economy back on track. His administration swept to office with promises of drastic economic changes to tackle negative reserves, inflation above 100% and years of economic stagnation. According to Reuters, venture capital firm GV, backed by Google parent Alphabet Inc., has hired Michael McBride from software firm GitLab as its latest investment partner to focus on open source and AI startups, the firm told Reuters. McBride served as the chief revenue officer for five years at GitLab, an open source developer tools maker in GV's portfolio that went public in late 2021. According to Reuters, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's three way coalition has agreed a budget for next year, after a month of wrangling following a constitutional court ruling that upended the government's financial plans. In plugging a 17 billion euro funding gap, the government plans to cut spending in some areas and also to return to a limit on new net borrowing in 2024 at least initially. According to Reuters, Vice President Kamala Harris will host 100 Democratic state legislators from 39 states at the White House on Wednesday, as the Biden administration searches for ways to curb the country's growing gun deaths. The Department of Justice will also announce two actions that offer states a framework to support safe storage and report stolen firearms. According to Reuters, Brazil's Congress committed on Wednesday to a federal investigation into petrochemical company Brascom over the sinking soil in the city of Maceo, which has forced about 60,000 people to be moved since 2018. The launch of an official investigation in Brazil's Congress follows a breach on Sunday of one of Brascom's more than 30 salt mines under Maceo, a coastal city with nearly 1 million people in Brazil's northeast region. According to Reuters, Glencore will publish an updated climate action transition plan in March 2024, it said on Wednesday, after some investors rejected its climate progress report and it agreed to buy Canadian minor tech resources steelmaking coal business. More than 30% of Glencore's investors, including major shareholder BlackRock, rejected the company's climate report at its annual meeting in May, demanding more clarity on how it will meet its commitments to cut emissions. According to Reuters, Goldman Sachs expects a significant uptick in trading volumes of blockchain-based assets within the next one or two years, the bank's global head of digital assets told Reuters. The Wall Street heavyweight has also seen increasing client interest in crypto derivatives trading, Matthew McDermott said, as markets expect the U.S. securities regulator to soon approve an application for a spot Bitcoin ETF. According to Reuters, Pagaya Technologies said on Wednesday it has partnered with auto finance firm Exeter Finance, which intends to use the fintech firm's credit decisioning product across its national network of over 13,000 auto dealers. Financial firms including major banks and fintechs have increased the usage of AI in their operations, with companies such as Symphony, which counts Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan among its clients, teaming up with Google to ramp up its voice analytics offerings to investment firms. According to Bloomberg, for the first time in more than a year the oil market is flashing bearishness in every key global pricing hub. On Wednesday, several Dubai crude time spreads flipped into Contango, a structure where nearby prices trade at a discount to later ones, after similar moves in the Brent and West Texas intermediate benchmarks. As well as pointing to an oversupplied market, Contango also tends to provide trend following funds with a signal to sell more futures. According to Reuters, U.S. producer prices were unexpectedly unchanged in November as a decline in the cost of energy products more than offset higher food prices, indicating that inflation at the factory gate continued to subside. The unchanged reading in the producer price index for final demand last month reported by the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics on Wednesday followed revised 0.4% drop in October. The PPI was previously reported to have declined 0.5% in October. According to Reuters, emerging markets debt and stock portfolios drew in $43.4 billion from foreign investors in November, the largest net amount since January, even as China posted another month of net outflows, data from the Institute of International Finance show. Expectations of a peak in monetary policy tightening in developed economies was seen as a sign rates will come down globally, feeding into the frenzy with the November figure comparing to an outflow of $3.5 billion in October and inflows of $41.9 billion in November 2022. 
According to Reuters, global news publisher Axel Springer is partnering with OpenAI, the company behind the chat GPT chatbot, in a first-of-its-kind deal that will deliver summaries of Axel Springer content in response to chat GPT queries, the companies announced on Wednesday. As part of the deal, when users ask chat GPT a question, the chatbot will deliver summaries of relevant news stories from Axel Springer brands including Politico, Business Insider, Build and Welt. Those summaries will include material from stories that would otherwise require subscriptions to read. The summaries will cite the Axel Springer publication as the source, and also provide a link to the full article it summarizes. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks were poised for a higher open on Wednesday as fresh data signaled signs of cooling inflation ahead of the Federal Reserve's final policy decision of the year, where it is widely expected to leave interest rates unchanged. According to Bloomberg, the world's biggest ESG fund class, which sits on roughly $5 trillion of client assets, has raised its exposure to the oil and gas sector by about two-thirds since stricter regulations were enforced two and a half years ago. Funds that are registered as promoting environmental, social and good governance metrics had about 2.3% of their holdings in fossil fuel assets at the end of the third quarter, up from 1.4% right after Europe introduced a framework for ESG investing in early 2021, according to data provided by Morningstar Inc. Exposure to renewable energy assets slipped to 0.3% of total holdings from 0.4% in the same period, the data show. According to Reuters, billionaire Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Industries and U.S. giant Walt Disney are discussing a plan to hold next-stage talks about their India media business merger in London next week, two people familiar with the matter said. Disney and Reliance have held talks to merge their India businesses by forming a joint venture company in which Ambani's media unit would hold a majority stake, though finer details of business structures and valuations are yet to be discussed. According to Reuters, the retail sector could continue to lead U.S. bankruptcies next year due to sticky inflation and high interest rates, but analysts expect easing monetary policy to offer some respite in the second half of 2024. There have been 591 U.S. corporate bankruptcy filings so far this year, the highest since 2020, according to data from SP Global Market Intelligence. According to Reuters, Trend following a niche hedge funds that trade cryptocurrencies and insurance-linked assets attracted most new investor money in the first three quarters of 2023, according to a global report by research firm Prekin on Wednesday. Hedge funds making use of algorithms to catch market trends, our commodity trading advisors saw $13.1 billion of net cash inflows, Prekin said. According to Bloomberg, U.S. producer price gains slowed in November as energy costs declined adding to signs that inflation pressures are abating. The producer price index for final demand was unchanged from a month earlier. Excluding food and energy, the so-called core PPI was also flat, Bureau of Labor Statistics data showed. According to Bloomberg, traders ramped up bets on interest rate cuts by the Bank of England next year after soft GDP data reinforced the view that policymakers won't be able to keep monetary policy tight for so long. Markets priced 97 basis points of easing in 2024, the most in the current cycle. That means three-quarter point cuts are fully baked in and there's an 85% chance of a fourth, an outcome that would take borrowing costs to 4.25%. Traders are betting on the first move coming in June. According to Reuters, Germany's emerging liquefied natural gas terminal in the Elbe River port of Stade expects its floating regasification vessel to arrive in February allowing seaborne gas cargoes to be fed into local pipeline grids, its management said on Wednesday. The move is part of Germany's quest to increase LNG import capacity so it can end reliance on Russian pipeline gas, which Europe has heavily depended on prior to Moscow's invasion of Ukraine last year. According to Reuters, the U.S. Supreme Court, which in 2022 ended its recognition of a constitutional right to abortion, on Wednesday agreed to hear a bid by President Joe Biden's administration to preserve broad access to the abortion pill, setting up another major ruling on reproductive rights set to come in a presidential election year. The justices took up the administration's appeal of an August decision by the New Orleans-based Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals that would curb how the pill, called mifepristone, is delivered and distributed, barring telemedicine prescriptions and shipments by mail of the drug.
The High Court also agreed to hear an appeal by the drug's manufacturer, Danco Laboratories. According to Reuters, the Mexican government has signed an agreement with the local unit of Canadian Pacific Kansas City to build a suburban passenger train for the northern city of Monterey, the government's official gazette said on Wednesday. The new CPKC project aims to encompass a 75-kilometer rail corridor with 26 stations between the west of the Monterey metropolitan area and the municipality of Pescaria, according to the Gazette. According to Bloomberg, armed guards on a fuel tanker exchanged gunfire with a small boat in the Red Sea, another sign of escalating risks in one of the world's most crucial waterways. The frequency of attacks in the maritime corridor handling about 12% of global trade has increased in recent days. The latest incident takes the number of merchant ships attacked or approached around Yemen since Israel's war with Hamas broke out in October to about a dozen. Iran-backed Houthi militants, who support Hamas in the conflict, have claimed many of those hits. According to Reuters, the benchmark SP500 and the Nasdaq gained on Wednesday as fresh data indicated inflation pressures were easing ahead of the Federal Reserve's final policy decision of the year, where it is widely expected to leave interest rates unchanged. According to Reuters, a cyberattack that knocked Ukraine's biggest mobile network operator offline has been claimed by a hacking group believed to be affiliated with Russian military intelligence, Ukraine's cyber defense agency said on Wednesday. Tuesday's attack on Kyivstar, which has 24.3 million mobile subscribers and more than 1.1 million home internet users, knocked out services, damaged IT infrastructure, and silenced air raid alert systems in some parts of Ukraine. According to Reuters, Citigroup is offering to pay some of its employees a portion of their annual bonuses early if they agree to voluntarily depart, Bloomberg News reported on Wednesday, citing people familiar with the matter. The employees who take up the bank's offer will also be allowed to keep all of their deferred stock awards in addition to the bonus, the report said. According to Reuters, Coinbase said it will begin offering spot crypto trading services on its international exchange on Wednesday as the company expands its base beyond the United States. Spot trading on the company's international exchange, which is currently geared toward derivatives trading, will roll out in phases starting with the digital currencies Bitcoin and Ether against USDC stablecoin on December 14, Coinbase said in a blog post. According to Bloomberg, the electric vehicle industry that once spawned multi-billion dollar enterprises is becoming a difficult place for investors as growth rapidly slows. Shares of cash-burning startups Rivian Automotive Inc. and Lucid Group Inc. have tumbled nearly 90% since the heyday of late 2021 wiping out a combined $217 billion of shareholder value. This year, an index of global EV makers and suppliers is trailing the broader U.S. market by the most since its inception in 2015. According to Yahoo Finance, the Federal Trade Commission had its first win earlier this week in its crusade to block drug company deals. Sanofi on Monday ended its up to $735 million licensing deal with Mays Therapeutics. It was a victory for FTC Chair Lena Khan, who is tarting to make good on her threats to take a closer look at smaller deals, which is necessary, the agency believes, to slow down growing monopolies in the pharma business. According to Reuters, General Motors said on Wednesday Doug Parks, who leads the automaker's global product development team, would retire after nearly four decades with the company during which he played a key role in its electrification strategy. During his tenure, Parks has overseen teams that are responsible for developing GM's EV architecture and the engineering group behind its self-driving unit, Cruise. According to Bloomberg, hedge funds and brokerages are getting new requirements from the Securities and Exchange Commission to centrally clear far more of their U.S. Treasuries trades in a major structural overhaul for the $26 trillion market. The SEC will vote Wednesday to require that all transactions involving repurchase agreements use clearinghouses, which serve as a backstop by sitting between buyers and sellers. In a partial win for hedge funds, they would be exempt from having to centrally clear their cash treasuries trades. Still, the new rules could bolster oversight of highly leveraged strategies such as the so-called basis trade, which use the repo market and that U.S. officials say can pose broad dangers. According to Reuters, 
U.S. stocks moved higher in muted trading and treasury yields slipped on Wednesday as economic data affirmed inflation is cooling and investors bided their time ahead of the U.S. Federal Reserve's rate decision. The SP500 and the Nasdaq were modestly higher while the Dow was essentially flat after notching 2023 closing highs in the previous session, while crude regained some ground in the wake of Tuesday's slide. According to Bloomberg, Exxon Mobil Corp introduced a new compensation policy that would pay some traders cash bonuses, a significant change within the U.S. energy giant as it looks to expand its trading operations. Under the new structure shared internally last week, traders will be divided into two categories, so-called system traders who buy and sell physical commodities in support of the company's operations, and traders who take on risk to boost company profits. Only the latter will be eligible for performance bonuses. The bonuses will be all cash and will be paid out starting in December 2024. Details of the changes were described by people familiar with the matter, who asked not to be named discussing internal matters. According to Yahoo Finance, two of the housing market's biggest foes are finally retreating, mortgage rates and inflation. Putting the already hot homebuilding market once again into focus for 2024. So far this year, the SPDRSP Homebuilders ETF has gained over 48%, and the rally in homebuilder stocks is expected to continue, albeit in a calmer fashion, as BTIG's Carl Reichart, managing director and homebuilding analyst, wrote in a note to clients. According to Bloomberg, Nigeria's central bank has suspended a widely criticized practice of making low cost loans to support the country's economic development. Following a pledge last month from recently appointed Governor Olayemi Cardozo to focus on the institution's core monetary policy mission, the bank said on Wednesday it would no longer accept new loan applications for any of its intervention schemes. According to Reuters, Starbucks did not engage in any anti-union practices during its contract negotiations with union employees at its U.S. stores, a report based on a third-party inquiry showed on Wednesday. The coffee chain appointed labor relations expert Thomas Mackle in March on a request by shareholders to look into its labor practices following complaints to the National Labor Relations Board by some employees and labor groups. According to Bloomberg, the largest unit in the troubled real estate group founded by Rene Benko is urgently seeking 600 million euros of financing from funds as it prepares to file for insolvency. Under the terms of a deal proposed by Cigna Prime, Investors would provide 300 million euros of so-called debtor-in-possession financing by Tuesday, with the remainder made available at a later stage of the process, according to people familiar with the matter. The cash would finance the company's restructuring under an insolvency process known as self-administration in Austria. According to Reuters, Germany's hastily agreed coalition pact to overcome a legal setback to its budget plans is based mainly on spending cuts that will drag further on already insipid growth in Europe's largest economy, economists said. As sought by Finance Minister Christian Lindner, an advocate of budgetary rigor, Germany will reinstate its cap on new net borrowing in 2024 and fill funding gaps worth a total 17 billion euros largely with cost savings. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Wednesday said she saw a consistent pattern of inflation falling over time and noted turbulence in the job market had really settled down. Inflation has come down meaningfully. We're not all the way there. There's further to go for the Fed to reach its 2% objective, Yellen told CNBC in an interview, expressing confidence that inflation would be in the 2% range by the end of 2024. We're getting a lot closer. According to Bloomberg, Defiance ETFs is launching the world's first exchange-traded fund tracking Israeli bonds, citing strong demand from investors even as the war in Gaza goes into its third month. The Defiance Israel Bond ETF, ticker CHI, began trading in the U.S. on Wednesday and tracks bonds issued by the Israeli government, government-related entities and local companies. The fund charges a fee of 48 basis points, in line with the average expense ratio for more specialized fixed-income ETFs, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, Apple is expected to be hit by a ban on its App Store rules that govern some music streaming services and a potential hefty fine from European Union regulators, Bloomberg News reported on Wednesday. EU authorities are putting the finishing touches to a decision that would prohibit Apple's practice of blocking music services from pushing their users away from App Store to alternative subscription options, the report said, 
citing people familiar with the investigation. According to Reuters, on the streets of Buenos Aires, Argentines were starting to grapple on Wednesday with how they will be impacted by major austerity measures and an over 50% devaluation of the local peso currency, part of a shock plan to stabilize the economy. The government of new libertarian president Javier Millet unveiled plans on Tuesday to slash state spending and turn around a deep fiscal deficit, moves that were cheered by markets. It devalued the peso currency sharply, which will stoke inflation already near 150%. According to Reuters, U.S. new vehicle sales are expected to rise just 1% to 15.7 million units next year, car shopping website Edmunds said on Wednesday, as demand is likely to come under pressure from high interest rates even as vehicle supply improves. Electric vehicle market share is expected to rise slightly to 8% of total new vehicle sales in 2024, from 6.9% in 2023 to date through November, Edmunds added. According to Reuters, a unit of Venezuela's state oil company PDVSA and U.S. oil major Chevron have requested a 15-year extension for two of their joint ventures from the country's oil ministry, the Deputy Minister Eric Perez said on Wednesday. PDVSA and Chevron have expanded operations since late last year under a special U.S. license, allowing Venezuela to resume crude exports to what was its largest market, the United States. But more investment is needed to reach production levels seen before oil sanctions were first imposed in 2019. According to Reuters, PGT Innovations Inc., a U.S. maker of vinyl and aluminum doors and windows, has rejected a new bid worth about $2.2 billion from Mitre Brands, a competitor backed by Coke Industries, according to people familiar with the matter. PGT's board of directors has rebuffed an improved $38 per share all-cash offer from MITRE, the sources said. Reuters reported in October that MITRE was working on putting together a revised proposal after its $33 per share bid was turned down by PGT. According to Reuters, Wall Street's main indexes gained on Wednesday after new data indicated inflation pressures were easing, ahead of the Federal Reserve's final monetary policy decision of the year where it is widely expected to leave interest rates unchanged. According to Reuters, heavy rains have brought relief to the northern part of Argentina's main agricultural area, benefiting the 2023-24 corn and soybean campaigns, but more water is needed in the south, the Rosario Grains Exchange said on Wednesday. Argentina, one of the world's leading food exporters, has received increased rainfall in recent weeks and days due to the arrival of the El Niño weather phenomenon. According to Reuters, Apple has said it now requires a judge's order to hand over information about its customers' push notification to law enforcement, putting the iPhone maker's policy in line with rival Google and raising the hurdle officials must clear to get app data about users. The new policy was not formally announced but appeared sometime over the past few days on Apple's publicly available law enforcement guidelines. It follows the revelation from Oregon Senator Ron Wyden that officials were requesting such data from Apple and Google the unit of alphabet that makes the operating system for Android phones. According to Bloomberg, BPPLC's former chief executive officer Bernard Looney will forfeit as much as £32.4 million in pay after resigning in September because he lied about his personal relationships with other employees. Mr Looney knowingly misled the board, the company said in a statement on Wednesday. The board has determined that this amounts to serious misconduct. According to Reuters, Etsy said on Wednesday it was planning to cut about 225 jobs, or 11% of its marketplace workforce, as part of a restructuring to pare down operating costs. Shares of the company fell 7% after the online marketplace operator forecast current quarter gross merchandise sales to decline as much as 2%. According to Reuters, Lucid Group has assembled almost 800 cars in its Saudi Arabian factory since its opening with its main focus on training more than 200 local employees, the EV maker's Middle East managing director said on Wednesday. California-based Lucid opened its first plant outside the United States in September, with an initial capacity to produce 5,000 EVs a year, after the Saudi government pledged to buy up to 100,000 vehicles from it over 10 years. According to Reuters, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will attend a political event in Rome on Saturday organized by the right-wing party of Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney, 
which is also due to host billionaire businessman Elon Musk. Maloney's office said she would see Sunak late on Saturday morning, the same time that Musk has said he will take part in a session at the Atriju Festival, a four-day gathering which is being held near the Vatican. According to Reuters, shares of Etsy Inc. dropped on Wednesday after the e-commerce platform announced it would slash 11% of its workforce as it seeks to cut costs, pressured by weakening demand for handcrafted goods. Etsy will lay off 225 people about 11% of total staff, and will incur financial charges of between $25 million and $30 million for severance payments, employee benefits and related costs, the company said in regulatory filings on Wednesday. According to Reuters, big U.S. companies including Walt Disney and Comcast increased advertising spending on Instagram after pausing commercials on X last month, according to Sensor Tower as marketers flee the Elon Musk-owned social media platform over anti-Semitic content. Disney and Comcast lifted their U.S. spending on the app owned by Meta by 40% and about 6% respectively in the two weeks from November 20, Sensor Tower data showed. Paramount, meanwhile, tripled its spending on Snapchat. According to Reuters, Increasingly popular botanical oils for repelling and killing ticks are not always as effective as regulated chemical products, according to a report published on Wednesday by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Some of these unregulated products have only minimal impact on ticks, a review of existing research found. According to Reuters, non-financial industry companies in Latin America are facing a negative outlook for next year because of continued high interest rates, slow regional economic growth and projected low prices for commodities because of a deceleration in China, Moody's said on Wednesday. The ratings agency said that though credit conditions for Latin American companies will be better in 2024 than during this year, uneven growth and still high debt costs will affect spending, investment and employment. According to Bloomberg, Bank of Nova Scotia plans to go after a larger share of customers' wallets as it refocuses its business on North America, shifting capital away from operations in Latin America that have delivered poor returns. Scotiabank has established a new transformation office to deliver on strategic priorities that include better productivity and moving away from a volume-based approach to customer acquisition in favor of one aimed squarely at profit, Chief Executive Officer Scott Thompson said during an Investor Day Wednesday. According to Reuters, a man accused of bribing top Venezuelan political and military leaders was convicted on Wednesday of shipping tens of thousands of kilograms of cocaine to the United States. A federal jury in New York found Carlos Orens guilty on three counts of drug trafficking and criminal weapons possession after a two-week trial. Orens had pleaded not guilty, and his defense lawyer portrayed him at trial as a legitimate businessman in Venezuela's agricultural and oil sectors. According to Yahoo Finance, it's been quite an eventful year for the social network formerly known as Twitter, and not in a good way. Sure. X got a new name and CEO, Linda Yaccarino. But the platform seems to be fighting a thousand battles on a thousand fronts. According to Reuters, Argentina's government under libertarian president Javier Millet has unveiled a shock therapy, economic plan, a radical and likely painful blueprint to stabilize the South American country's economy which faces its worst crisis in decades. The plan included a devaluation of the peso currency by more than 50%, which took effect on Wednesday, as well as wide-ranging measures for cutting state spending. The austerity moves have been cheered by markets but will likely hurt Argentines. According to Reuters, Ukraine's top mobile phone operator Kyivstar started restoring voice services to some clients on Wednesday after its networks were knocked out by a major cyber attack, its CEO Alexander Komarov said, with data and other services to follow. The company, which provides services to more than half of Ukraine's population, sustained huge damage during the attack on Tuesday, Komarov told Reuters, calling it the biggest cyber attack on telco infrastructure in the world. According to Reuters, Germany's 2024 budget deal could help to unblock talks on the revision of the European Union's long-term budget to provide money for Ukraine and migration, EU Budget Commissioner Johannes Hahn said on Wednesday. The 27-nation EU has been wrangling over a revision of its 2021-2027 budget since June, with the European Commission pushing for new money to support Ukraine and migration policies and governments pushing back, saying they are cash-strapped too. According to Yahoo Finance, 
The Federal Reserve maintained its benchmark interest rate on Wednesday in a range of 5.25% minus 5.50%, the highest in 22 years, but signaled they will ease policy next year while still leaving the door open for the possibility of higher rates as officials work to bring inflation back to the central bank's 2% target. Officials aren't expecting to raise rates over the next year, and see cutting rates by 75 basis points next year 25 basis points more than what was penciled in back in September. According to Yahoo Finance, the Federal Reserve kept interest rates unchanged in a range of 5.25% minus 5.5% at its final meeting of the year on Wednesday. But central bank officials predicted changes to come with interest rates expected to tick down to 4.6% next year. Along with its policy announcement, the Fed released updated economic forecasts in its summary of economic projections, including its dot plot, which maps out policymakers' expectations for where interest rates could be headed in the future. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields dropped on Wednesday after the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady, as expected, but flagged in its new economic projections that its tightening policy is ending and rate cuts are on the horizon next year. U.S. benchmark 10-year yields fell to their lowest since August, and were last down 12.7 basis points at 4.08%. According to Reuters, early holiday shopping season discounts from high-end fashion retailers like Bergdorf Goodman on New York's Fifth Avenue raised concern that a lackluster Christmas could lead to inventory gluts, potentially dragging labels into a discounting spiral that would cheapen their image. The latest U.S. credit card data from Barclays released on Wednesday showed that spending on luxury goods remained negative in November, down 15% year-on-year after a decline of 14% in October. According to Reuters, the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady on Wednesday and signaled in new economic projections that the historic tightening of U.S. monetary policy engineered over the last two years is at an end and lower borrowing costs are coming in 2024. Market Reaction According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady for a third meeting and gave its clearest signal yet that its aggressive hiking campaign is finished by forecasting a series of cuts next year. Officials decided unanimously to leave the target range for the benchmark federal funds rate at 5.25% to 5.5%, the highest since 2001. Policymakers penciled in no further interest rate hikes in their projections for the first time since March 2021, based on the median estimate. According to Reuters, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand said on Thursday it had issued a formal warning to Citigroup's local unit for failing to provide sender information in international payment transfers to recipient banks. The lapse arises from Citibank NZ's control deficiencies and failure to ensure measures were adequately applied to automated payments, around 64,000 transfers, that failed to pass on the true identity of the sender to the recipients. According to Reuters, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell on Wednesday said the central bank was likely done raising interest rates, but kept open the option to act again if needed. While we believe our policy rate is at or near its peak for the tightening cycle, the economy has surprised forecasters, Powell said a press conference following the latest Federal Open Market Committee meeting. According to Reuters, General Motors CEO Mary Barra said Wednesday the Detroit automaker still plans on moving to all-electric vehicle sales by 2035 even as it has recently delayed some EV production. Our plan is to only be selling EVs, light-duty EVs at that time but of course we're going to be responsive to where the customer is at but we have a plan to do that, Barra told reporters after an appearance at the Washington Economic Club. According to Reuters, Actor Anthony Anderson is set to host the 75th annual Primetime Emmys on January 15 after the ceremony was delayed due to the 2023 Hollywood strikes. Anderson's lead role is Andre on the ABC comedy Black-ish, and his executive producer position on the show garnered 11 Primetime Emmy Award nominations in recent years. According to Reuters, Meta Platforms Threads is starting a test where posts from accounts on the microblogging platform will be available on Mastodon and other services that use the ActivityPub protocol, CEO Mark Zuckerberg said on Wednesday. Meta had announced plans to make Threads compatible with open, interoperable social networks when the app was launched in July. According to Yahoo Finance, on the heels of Occidental Petroleum's agreement to buy oil and gas producer Crown Rock, 
industry watchers anticipate more consolidation is coming. What it says is that there are assets out there that you can buy more attractively than your own company stock, Cole Smead, CEO of Smead Capital Management told Yahoo Finance after the $12 billion deal was announced. According to Bloomberg, California's risk of blackouts has fallen as more renewable energy and batteries are added to its power grid, reducing the need to import electricity from other regions, industry regulators said Wednesday. The grid has been designated elevated risk, which means it has enough energy for normal conditions but could fall short in extreme weather, the North American Electric Reliability Corp. said in its latest long-term reliability report. That's actually an improvement over last year's designation of high risk meaning shortfalls were more likely and additional power sources were needed. According to Reuters, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said on Wednesday that the central bank still is unsure when it will end the process of shrinking the size of its balance sheet, even as it moves toward cutting its short-term interest rate target. We are not talking about altering the pace of QT right now, Powell said at his press conference following the Fed's policy decision. QT refers to quantitative tightening, or the contraction of the Fed's bond holdings. According to Reuters, Peru's inflation rate could converge to the central bank's target sooner than expected, the head of the bank said on Wednesday, arguing that the rate of rising prices in the Andean nation is now under control. We expect it to return to the range, if not in December, in the first quarter or in April next year, central bank head Julio Velarde said hinting at an earlier-than-expected easing of inflation. According to Bloomberg, the Treasury market rallied and swaps traders dialed up bets on interest rate cuts after the Federal Reserve opted to hold rates steady at the conclusion of its policy meeting Wednesday but surprised markets with a more aggressive forecast for monetary easing in 2024. Yields tumbled, with the policy-sensitive two-year notes plunging as much as 23 basis points to just under 4.50%. The yield on the 10-year note fell more than 14 basis points to a low of 4.06%. Fed swaps show about 133 basis points of reductions next year, up from 113 basis points prior to the central bank's decision. According to Reuters, the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit its first record high since January 2022 on Wednesday after the Federal Reserve signaled lower borrowing costs are coming in 2024. The Dow was up 1.12% at 36,986.89 points. According to Reuters, French media company Vivendi said it had decided to examine splitting up some of its activities into several entities, each of which would then be listed on the stock market, in order to boost their growth and development. Vivendi, in which France's billionaire Bollower family holds the biggest individual stake, said the businesses that could be spun off in this way included its TV unit Canal Plus, advertising arm Havas and an investment company holding its stake in French company Lagardère. According to Reuters, the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission on Wednesday voted to approve a plan from a Chicago cryptocurrency derivatives exchange and brokerage to also act as its own registered clearinghouse. The approval of the plan by Bitnomeal, an exchange founded in 2014, marks the first time the commodities regulator has voted to allow a vertically integrated market structure. Bitnomial also has exchange and broker licenses. Two Democratic and two Republican commissioners voted to okay the firm's application, while the third Democratic commissioner dissented. According to Reuters, Argentina's economy has many problems, and dealing with a mountain of debt repayments over the next two years could determine whether the new government's economic roadmap succeeds. The country's total sovereign debt exceeds $400 billion, some $110 billion of which is owed to the International Monetary Fund and to holders of restructured, privately held eurobonds. According to Reuters, Bank of America executive Keith Banks, who ran several of its major businesses, will retire at the end of February after more than four decades in finance, the company said on Wednesday. Banks currently serves as vice chair and chief investment officer for the lender's pension and benefits plan investments. In his 23-year tenure at B of A and its legacy companies, the executive led global wealth and investment management, as well as private banking. According to Reuters, U.S. officials say that Russian hackers are targeting servers hosting vulnerable software made by the Czech tech company JetBrains for potential solar wind-style espionage operations. In a statement, the U.S. National Security Agency, 
The FBI and the cyber watchdog agency CISA accused the hackers, sometimes known as Cozy Bear or App29, of trying to hijack the servers in a bid to access software developers' source code, something that could potentially allow them to tamper with its compilation or deployment. According to Yahoo Finance, expect gasoline prices to keep sliding over the next month to dip below a national average of $3 per gallon, one analyst says. I think the die has been cast for prices over the next 30 to 45 days, Tom Kloza, global head of energy analysis at OPIS, told Yahoo Finance on Wednesday. According to Reuters, the Dow Jones Industrial Average notched its first record high close since January 2022 on Wednesday after the Federal Reserve signaled lower borrowing costs are coming in 2024. The stock benchmark's first all-time high in nearly two years confirmed that it has been in a bull market since tumbling more than 20% through its closing low in September 2022, according to a common definition. According to Reuters, Amanda Blanc, the CEO of insurer Aviva, told British lawmakers on Wednesday that physical and verbal harassment of women in financial services eclipsed other industries and that she had heard, absolutely appalling, stories. Blanc, giving evidence to the Treasury Committee on Sexism in Finance, said she had posted a message on LinkedIn before appearing before lawmakers and had been inundated by private messages from women about predominantly poor experiences. According to Reuters, Veer Biotechnology said on Wednesday it will cut about 12% of its workforce, or about 75 positions, and close some facilities as part of its cost-cut measures. Shares of the immunology company fell 2.2% in aftermarket trading after Veer also said it was closing its research and development facilities in Missouri and Oregon in 2024. According to Yahoo Finance, this year was all about the megacap stocks, led by the magnificent 7 inches, which dominated market action as hype surrounding artificial intelligence and concerns over rising rates prompted investors to flock to proven tech companies. Looking ahead to the new year, JP Morgan is making the case that there's still money to be made in these high flyers, naming some of this year's big winners as the best buys for 2024. According to Reuters, African e-commerce firm Jumia Technologies will close its food delivery business in all seven countries in which the unit operates by the end of the year to focus on growing its core online retail business, it said on Wednesday. Jumia is aggressively cutting costs in order to turn profitable, including headcount reductions, exiting everyday grocery items and reducing delivery services not related to its e-commerce business. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks surged to a sharply higher close on Wednesday and benchmark Treasury yields slipped to their lowest level since August after the Federal Reserve flagged the end of its tightening cycle and struck a dovish tone for the year ahead. All three major U.S. stock indexes jumped to fresh closing highs for the year after the Federal Open Markets Committee left its Fed Fund's target rate unchanged at 5.25% to 5.50%. According to Reuters, U.S. interest rate futures on Wednesday increased the chances of rate cuts by the Federal Reserve starting next March, with a 77% probability after the U.S. central bank's new rate projections signaled the end of its tightening campaign. Before the release of the U.S. central bank's latest policy statement and economic projections, the probability of easing in March was around 40%. Rate futures also priced in more than 100 basis points in cuts next year, according to LSCG's Fed Watch. According to Reuters, the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit its first record closing high since January 2022 and the SP500 and Nasdaq rallied more than 1% each on Wednesday after the Federal Reserve signaled that its interest rate hiking policy is at an end and that it sees lower borrowing costs in 2024. In its policy statement, the Fed also left interest rates steady, as expected, and a near-unanimous 17 of 19 Fed officials projected that the policy rate will be lower by the end of 2024. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. Asian markets are poised for lift-off on Thursday, fueled by the dovish tilt from the Federal Reserve's final policy meeting of the year which lifted Wall Street, the Dow surged to a fresh all-time high, and slammed Treasury yields and the dollar. According to Reuters, Brazil's central bank lowered its benchmark interest rate by 50 basis points on Wednesday for the fourth time in a row and signaled that it would keep cutting rates at that pace beyond its next meeting in January. The bank's rate-setting committee, known as COPOM, 
unanimously lowered the SELIC policy rate to 11.75%, in line with the forecast of all 41 economists polled by Reuters. According to Reuters, three teachers in Florida on Wednesday sued the state over its law prohibiting transgender and non-binary teachers from using their preferred pronouns in school, saying it violates their constitutional rights. The lawsuit filed in federal court in Florida's capital, Tallahassee, says the state law is designed to stigmatize and demonize transgender and non-binary people, and deprives them of the equal protection of the law guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. According to Reuters, Carrier Global said on Wednesday it has entered into a definitive agreement to sell its global commercial refrigeration business to its joint venture partner Hire for an enterprise value of $775 million. The air conditioner maker, which is looking to streamline its portfolio, said the enterprise value also includes about $200 million of net pension liabilities. According to Reuters, Brazil's Alpargatas, the owner of the flip-flop brand Javianas, said on Wednesday its board had elected Lyle Miranda to take over as the firm's CEO, starting in February. The incoming boss will play an important role in continuing the transformation process that began in 2023, with a focus on simplification and efficiency, the shoemaker said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, New Zealand's economy unexpectedly contracted in the third quarter as high interest rates curbed consumer spending and investment. The local dollar fell. Gross domestic product declined 0.3% in the three months through September after increasing a revised 0.5% in the previous quarter, Statistics New Zealand said Thursday in Wellington. Economists expected 0.2% growth. From a year earlier, the economy shrank 0.6%, the weakest since a pandemic-led contraction in 2021. According to Reuters, Mattel said on Wednesday it was planning to make a live-action feature film based on its American Girl doll line with Paramount Pictures and Temple Hill Entertainment, after the box office success of its Barbie movie earlier this year. Shares of the toymaker rose marginally in extended trading after it also said Lindsay Anderson Beer, who wrote the Netflix film, Sierra Burgess is a Loser, would write the screenplay and produce the film. According to Reuters, Apple's stock reached a record high close on Wednesday, lifted in a broad Wall Street rally after the Federal Reserve signaled lower borrowing costs are coming in 2024. Apple's stock climbed 1.7% to end the day at $179.96 per share, beating the iPhone maker's previous record high close of $196.45 on July 31. According to Bloomberg, High-stakes Treasury Department guidance for claiming hydrogen production tax credits under U.S. President Joe Biden's climate law has drawn the ire of Senator Joe Manchin, who said the horrible rules will make it too hard to qualify. The rules, which Manchin said are expected to be issued next week, have been the subject of intense lobbying and deliberations across the Biden administration amid a fight over what sources of power can fuel the energy-intensive hydrogen production process. According to Reuters, Photoshop maker Adobe said on Wednesday it was facing regulatory scrutiny over its subscription models and forecast annual and quarterly revenue below estimates, sending its shares down more than 5% in after-hours trading. The San Jose, California-based company said in a regulatory filing that since June 2022 it has been cooperating with the Federal Trade Commission in response to a civil investigative demand seeking information regarding its disclosure and subscription cancellation practices. According to Reuters, European Union leaders head into a high-stakes summit for Ukraine on Thursday, with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban blocking both the start of EU membership talks and €50 billion Euros in financial aid for Kyiv. The summit comes at a crucial time in Ukraine's war against Russia's invasion, after a counter-offensive failed to make major gains and with the Biden administration so far unable to get a €60 billion aid package for Kyiv through Congress. According to Reuters, Grupo Santander's asset management arm has reached an agreement to buy BNP Paribas asset management operation in Mexico, the Spanish bank said on Wednesday. Santander, which did not disclose the financial details of the purchase, said it would allow the bank to strengthen its institutional investor business, which it said was one of its key long-term strategies. According to Yahoo Finance, as the Federal Reserve continues its fight against inflation, the outlook on where mortgage rates will end up in the new year is looking far less grim. 
Economists predict rates could land anywhere from 5.7% to 6.8% depending on how quickly inflation cools and whether the Federal Reserve manages to put an end to one of its most intense rate hike campaigns in decades. According to Reuters, Swiss lender UBS Group AG has stepped up efforts to recoup hundreds of millions in cash bonuses that Credit Suisse paid to retain dealmakers before the lender's collapse, Bloomberg News reported on Wednesday. UBS has contacted hundreds of bankers and offered some multi-year payment plans amid efforts to claw back a chunk of the 1.2 billion Swiss francs in restricted cash bonuses, the report said, citing people familiar with the matter and documents seen by it. According to Reuters, Australia's competition watchdog said on Thursday it will not oppose Woolworth's acquisition of a 55% stake in specialty pet retailer Petstock Group. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission after a review of Woolworth's stake purchase proposal for Petstock, had flagged in November that the pet retailer's acquisitions between 2017 and 2022 raised significant competition concerns. According to Reuters, Occidental Petroleum's plan to pay off debt from its acquisition of Crown Rock should result in a reduced financial burden within a year of closing, credit rating firms said, a contrast to its traumatic takeover of Anadarko Petroleum in 2019. The proposed $12 billion acquisition of Crown Rock got a thumbs down by some Wall Street analysts haunted by the 2019 Anadarko deal that saddled Occidental in $40 billion debt months ahead of an oil market price collapse. According to Reuters, one of Cedar Fair's largest investors has sent a letter to the U.S. amusement park operator to complain that the company is stripping shareholders from a say on its planned $8 billion merger with Six Flags Entertainment Corp. Neuberger Berman which owns about 3% of Cedar Fair, told Reuters it wrote to the company on December 4 to complain that it structured the deal so that shareholders will not get to vote on it as Six Flags shareholders will. According to Reuters, Medtronic said on Wednesday that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration had approved its system for a type of condition that can cause stroke or heart failure. The system, Pulse Select Pulsed Field Ablation, is used for the treatment of atrial fibrillation a condition that is characterized by an irregular rhythm of the heart. According to Bloomberg, Adobe Inc. gave a lukewarm outlook for sales in 2024, disappointing investors who expected new generative artificial intelligence tools would boost the software company's results. Revenue will be about $21.4 billion in the fiscal year ending in December 2024, the company said Wednesday in a statement. Profit excluding some items, will be as much as $18 a share. Analysts, on average, estimated sales of $21.7 billion and adjusted profit of $18 a share. According to Reuters, with more than a full year passed since China eased restrictions and let COVID-19 sweep its households, scientists are worried a unique opportunity may be slipping away to study long COVID from possibly hundreds of millions of infections in that country. Global disease experts say little is known about China's experience with long-term COVID effects, which in Britain, Canada, the US and elsewhere are thought to have afflicted millions with debilitating fatigue, brain fog and other symptoms that persist for months or even years. According to Bloomberg, Asian equities joined a global rally in stocks and bonds on signs the Federal Reserve will cut rates next year, reigniting a bullish pulse across markets as inflation eases. Australian shares opened higher and Japanese equity futures rose after a rally on Wall Street pushed the SP500 to the highest level in nearly two years and to within 2% of its peak. Apple Inc. shares touched a new high, helping push the Dow Jones Industrial Average to a record and the Nasdaq 100 to a gain of more than 50% this year. According to Bloomberg, an alleged fraud in China that ensnared financial firms including a major hedge fund has set off alarms across the industry with investment managers, regulators and brokerages racing to improve risk monitoring. The matter concerns the investment of about 1 billion yuan in products that were issued by Chinasoft New Momentum Asset Management Company but managed by other hedge funds. In response to local reports of the suspected scam, the company said last month that some of the products faced repayment difficulties due to a breach of contract by the underlying manager, Shenzhen Huisheng. According to Reuters, U.S. power grids will face more vulnerability than previously thought in coming years as peak demand increases and old generators retire, the North American Electric Reliability Corporation said in a webcast on Wednesday. 
The group painted a bleak picture for some power markets in the U.S., as wide-scale electrification spurs demand to grow at a faster pace than new generation capacity additions, and as old facilities retire. Those markets could face capacity shortfalls as a result, NERC said. According to Bloomberg, Chinese brokerages fell from the top of the global equity underwriting league tables this year as offerings slowed in mainland markets, a consequence of the country's tightened regulations amid an economic slump. Goldman Sachs Group Inc. reclaimed the title of the busiest equities underwriter worldwide from Citic Securities Company, which slid down to the sixth spot in this year's league table compiled by Bloomberg. China International Capital Corp. dropped out from the top five. According to Reuters, the dollar was under pressure on Thursday after the Federal Reserve's latest economic projections indicated that the interest rate hike cycle has come to an end and lower borrowing costs are coming in 2024. Both the euro and Japanese yen jumped in response, with the European Central Bank preparing to announce its policy decision later on Thursday and the Bank of Japan coming up next week. According to Reuters, National Australia Bank said it had agreed to combine its New Zealand Wealth Advice and Asset Management Unit with that of Jardin Wealth and Asset Management, forming a new entity with about 29 billion New Zealand dollars of funds under advice and administration. The new entity, to be called First Cape, would also hold 15 billion New Zealand dollars of funds under management, NAB said on Thursday. According to Reuters, a majority of the U.S. Senate backed a defense policy bill on Wednesday authorizing a record $886 billion in annual military spending, paving the way for the measure to become law for a 63rd straight year. As voting continued, the 100-member Senate backed the National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, by 68 to 11, with strong support from both Democrats and Republicans. Senate approval will send the measure to the House of Representatives, which could pass it as soon as later this week. According to Reuters, the head of International Monetary Fund said on Thursday that cryptocurrencies need to be regulated with rules and infrastructure because they pose risks to financial stability. The challenge is that high crypto asset adoption could undermine macro financial stability, the IMF's managing director, Kristalina Georgieva, said at a conference in Seoul on digital currencies. According to Bloomberg, Nasdaq Inc. was hit by a system error Wednesday that impacted thousands of stock orders, leading some to be cancelled, according to people with knowledge of the matter. The exchange operator told market participants it's investigating an order entry issue that caused inaccuracies and delays, the people said, asking not to be identified discussing a private matter. Nasdaq's electronic communication channel, which processes so-called financial information exchange or fix messages, was affected, the people said. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve pivoted toward reversing the steepest interest rate hikes in a generation after containing an inflation surge so far without a recession or a significant cost to employment. While Chair Jerome Powell said Wednesday policymakers are prepared to resume rate increases should price pressures return, he and his colleagues issued forecasts showing that a series of cuts would be likely next year. Powell said the topic came up at their meeting, where the Fed decided to keep rates at a 22-year high for a third straight time. According to Bloomberg, after clashing in recent years, Wall Street traders and the Federal Reserve are, for once, broadly in sync. The great monetary pivot is near as central bankers engineer a once unthinkable soft landing in the world's largest economy. That's the big picture takeaway after the Fed gave its clearest signal yet that its historic policy tightening campaign is over by projecting more aggressive interest rate cuts in 2024 in the process igniting one of the biggest post-meeting rallies in recent memory. According to Bloomberg, the Reserve Bank of Australia has yet to see the case for lending directly to pension or other investment funds in the way that recently occurred in the US and UK after major dislocations, Assistant Governor Brad Jones said on Thursday. The main reason is that, historically at least, the Australian financial system has been less directly exposed to the risk of systemically important liquidity mismatches associated with these funds, Jones said in a speech titled, Bage Ho and the Lender of Last Resort, 150 years on, in Sydney. According to Bloomberg, Australia's jobless rate rose to the highest level in one to half a year in November as an increase in people seeking work outweighed a surge in hiring. Unemployment rose to 3.9 percent, the highest level since May 2022, from an upwardly revised 3.8 percent a month earlier, 
Australian Bureau of Statistics data showed Thursday. The participation rate climbed to a record 67.2% in November as the economy added 61,500 rolls, easily outpacing estimates for an 11,500 gain. According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks, bonds and currencies look set to rally Thursday after the Federal Reserve signaled it will begin cutting interest rates next year. That's the view of money managers, analysts and strategists who expect currencies that are sensitive to dollar movements to prove most attractive in early trading in the region. According to Reuters, Australia employment far outpaced expectations for a second straight month in November as firms added to full-time staff, yet the jobless rate still rose as even more people went looking for work. Figures from the Australian Bureau of Statistics on Thursday showed net employment jumped 61,500 in November from October, when it rose a revised 42,700. Market forecasts had been for an increase of around 11,000. According to Reuters, exchange operator Nasdaq was hit by a system error on Wednesday that impacted stock orders and led to some being cancelled. The incident first started at 2.41 p.m. Eastern Time on December 13, 2023 which involved fix rash ports, according to the Nasdaq website. According to Bloomberg, Credit Suisse dismissed its entire wealth management team in China, scrapping its ambition to become one of the biggest foreign money managers in the country as UBS Group AG decided not to take on the staff, people familiar with the matter said. Those let go included at least 20 relationship managers and investment consultants as well as Wang Jing, the chief executive officer of Credit Suisse's securities venture, the people said, asking not to be identified because the matter isn't public. Some support roles were also affected, they said, without being specific on numbers. The division at one point had about 40 staff, one of the people said. According to Reuters, oil prices rose in early Asian trade on Thursday extending gains from the previous session following a bigger-than-expected weekly withdrawal from U.S. crude storage and signaling from the U.S. Federal Reserve that it would start lowering borrowing costs in 2024. Lower interest rates cut consumer borrowing costs, which can boost economic growth and demand for oil. The news also sent the dollar falling, which makes oil less expensive for foreign purchasers. According to Bloomberg, Day one of the grand experiment to cure Argentina's crisis-ravaged economy handed President Javier Millet a victory. His government's moves to devalue the peso 54% and slash the budget were received well on Wall Street, where traders bid up the country's bonds, and, more importantly, at home, where there were no signs of panic among inflation-wary Argentine shoppers and investors. According to Reuters, a century after the 1924 Paris Olympic men's marathon was won by Finn Albin Stenruz in 2 hours 41.22 minutes, next year's games in the same city could feature the first official sub-2 hour time for the distance after 2023 saw more barriers smashed. Kenya's double Olympic champion Eliud Kipchoge, who dipped under 2 hours with his unofficial Ineos challenge run in 2019, had dragged the record down to 2 minutes 1 second and 9 milliseconds in 2022. According to Reuters, Argentina's December inflation rate will clearly be substantially higher than in November, Economy Minister Luis Caputo said in a televised interview Wednesday, as Javier Miley's newly elected government grapples with an economy in crisis. Monthly inflation in the Latin American nation hit 12.8% in November alone, the highest monthly figure this year, according to statistics agency data released earlier Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, the dollar dropped to a four-month low Thursday as traders digested the clearest signal yet that the Federal Reserve's aggressive hiking campaign is over. The Bloomberg Dollar Spot Index dropped 0.3% to its lowest since August, extending losses from Wednesday after Fed officials penciled in a sharper pace of rate cuts than they had seen in September. The U.S. Central Bank kept rates steady for a third consecutive time. According to Reuters, every day, Nearly 60 fully loaded very large crude oil carriers sail between the Persian Gulf and Chinese ports, carrying about half of the oil that powers the world's second largest economy. As the vessels enter the South China Sea, they ply waters increasingly controlled by China's growing military, from the missile batteries and airfields at its bases on disputed islands to its stealthy Type 055 destroyers. According to Reuters, Asian stocks broadly rallied on Thursday morning 
after the U.S. Federal Reserve flagged the end of its tightening cycle and struck a dovish tone for the year ahead. U.S. Treasury yields slid to fresh four-month trough, while the dollar continued to slide. According to Reuters, the Tax Reform Panel of Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party has agreed on income tax breaks aimed at offsetting the pain of price hikes on households to help change decades of deflationary mindset, a document reviewed by Reuters showed on Thursday. The LDP, and its small coalition ally Komeito, decided to forego tax hikes for increased defense spending next fiscal year, as Prime Minister Fumio Kishida prioritized the tax cuts as a symbol of government efforts to push a pro-growth agenda. According to Reuters, Indian government bond yields are likely to open lower in the early trading session on Thursday, tracking a plunge in U.S. peers, after the U.S. Federal Reserve's indication that its policy tightening is over and rate cuts are looming. The 10-year benchmark bond yield is expected to open in the 7.18 to 7.23 percent range, following its previous closing at 7.2581 percent, a trader with a primary dealership said. According to Reuters, Vietnam's leading tech firm FPT has established an automotive technology subsidiary in Texas, it said on Thursday, with a $100 million plan to expand globally to serve clients such as Hyundai and Honda. The unit, FPT Automotive, is backed by the software arm of Vietnam's biggest listed tech company by market value, FPT, which offers AI, cloud and big data services to clients across the world and is also growing in chip design and education. According to Bloomberg, Berkshire Hathaway Inc. has bought nearly $590 million of Occidental Petroleum Corp. stock this week, after the Texas oil company agreed to buy private Permian producer Crown Rock LP in one of the biggest energy deals of the year. The purchases were made in five tranches after the deal was announced on December 11, according to a regulatory filing published late Wednesday. Berkshire has been buying Occidental stock steadily over the last three years and is now the company's largest shareholder with a stake of just over 27%. According to Bloomberg, a global rally in corporate bonds that has dragged credit spreads down to their tightest in 22 months marched ahead in Asia on Thursday given the dovish signals from the Federal Reserve. Yield premiums on Asian investment grade dollar notes narrowed at least two basis points, according to traders. That put the premiums near record lows touched last week, a Bloomberg index shows. According to Bloomberg, Chinese-owned online marketplace Temu sued fast fashion rival Shine in the U.S. over what it called, intensified, anti-competitive practices, reviving a legal fight between the e-commerce upstarts after both had dropped earlier lawsuits against each other. Whaleco Inc., which operates as Temu, accused Shine of hatching a desperate plan to undercut its business in a 100-page filing to the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, nearly triple the length of its original lawsuit. The Wednesday complaint alleged that Shine filed tens of thousands of copyright takedown notices against Temu, forced fashion suppliers into exclusive agreements, and threatened or even detained Temu merchants. According to Bloomberg, Argentina will pay $912 million owed to the International Monetary Fund next week while it seeks to renegotiate the country's $44 billion deal, according to economy minister Luis Caputo. In his first interview since taking office this week, Caputo said President Javier Miley's administration will honor the upcoming repayment despite repeating in previous occasions that there's no more money. He didn't elaborate on changes the government would like to make to the IMF program nor did he say where the funds to to make the December 21st repayment will come from. According to Reuters, TMX Group, the owner of the Toronto Stock Exchange, said on Wednesday it had acquired an around 78% stake in U.S. data analytics company VetaFI Holdings for $848 million. In January, the group took a 21% stake in the New York City-based firm, which values the total deal at $1.03 billion. According to Bloomberg, oil advanced from a five-month low on positive demand signals including a drop in U.S. inventories and signs that the Federal Reserve has finished hiking interest rates. West Texas Intermediate rose toward $70 a barrel, after rebounding 1.3% on Wednesday from its lowest since end June. Global benchmark Brent was above $74. U.S. crude stockpiles fell for a second week while total oil and product inventories declined by the most since October the Energy Information Administration said. According to Bloomberg, 
The Hong Kong Monetary Authority held its base rate at 5.75% on Thursday after the U.S. Federal Reserve maintained its own interest rate and gave its clearest signal yet that its aggressive hiking campaign is finished. Hong Kong's borrowing costs have surged in the last two years as the Fed aggressively raised rates to fight inflation. The city's base rate moves in lockstep with the Fed because the local currency is pegged to the greenback. According to Reuters, South Korea's vice financial regulator chief said on Thursday that authorities would take innovation more into account in the next stage of regulating cryptocurrencies. Regulations need to have a balance between investor protection and technological innovation, said Kim So Young, vice chairman of the Financial Services Commission, at a conference held in Seoul on digital currencies. According to Reuters, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority on Thursday left its base rate charged through the overnight discount window unchanged at 5.75 percent, tracking a move by the U.S. Federal Reserve to keep rates steady. The U.S. Central Bank left interest rates unchanged on Wednesday and Fed Chief Jerome Powell said the historic tightening of monetary policy is likely over as inflation falls faster than expected and with a discussion of cuts in borrowing costs coming into view. According to Reuters, PDD Holdings International facing discount e-commerce platform, Temu, filed a lawsuit in a U.S. District of Columbia court on Wednesday alleging rival Shine employed, mafia-style intimidation, to coerce suppliers that also worked with Temu. According to the filing, Boston-based company Whaleco Inc., which operates in the U.S. as Temu, alleges China-founded, Singapore-based rival Shine misused intellectual property legislation to stop merchants and suppliers working with Temu. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan has become used to being a policy outlier over its decades-long quest to vanquish deflation. It's likely to be no different in 2024. With inflation above the 2% target for more than a year and a half, Governor Kazuo Ueda is widely expected to scrap the world's last negative interest rate around the time when markets bet the Federal Reserve will start cutting. According to Bloomberg, TMX Group Limited the owner of the Toronto Stock Exchange and other trading venues, agreed to buy an index provider to the exchange-traded fund industry, expanding deeper into financial data. TMX will pay $848 million to buy the 78% of Veta FI Holdings LLC that it doesn't already own, financing the deal with bank debt, according to a statement late Wednesday. According to Reuters, Japan's political scandal looks set to wipe out heavyweights of the ruling party's once mighty faction favoring big monetary stimulus, easing the path for the Bank of Japan in pulling the economy out of decades of ultra-low interest rates. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on Wednesday announced he would make changes to his cabinet as he seeks to stem the fallout from a fundraising scandal that has further dented public support for his embattled administration. According to Reuters, Japan's central bank is likely to end the year as one of the world's most dovish, as policymakers look for clues on whether the economy can weather overseas risks and achieve a sustained price and wage growth. With consumption showing signs of weakness and next year's wage outlook still uncertain, the Bank of Japan is widely expected to maintain its ultra-loose policy settings next week. 